Hello and welcome to the Knit Sip Happy Podcast. My name is Nancy and I'm coming to you today from the east coast of Canada just outside of Moncton, New Brunswick. Hello, hello, where's my wine? <laughs> um, how have you been? Um, I'm trying some new settings on my camera so we'll see how that goes today in editing. I am here. It is Sunday, March 10th. When I'm recording this, you'll see it a day or two later, depending on how editing goes. Thank you so much for being here. It has been three weeks since my last confession, and I'm here to chat about some knitting with you today. Cheers. Mm. Is the first sip always the best? I'm not a coffee or tea drinker, so I hear that with coffee and tea drinkers all the time too. So I um, have a slightly different setup right now because I'm gonna have to stand up and show you some things so I don't have everything in place. So I'm just gonna have a quick look at my notes. Where you can find me, I am knit, sip, happy everywhere. I'm gonna put a screen up so you can see all of my links to Instagram, Facebook, Ravelry, and my email address. If you are new here, um, if you have found me recently, I hope you enjoy uh, this little chat and um, it's traditional format. We're going to do FOs, whips, uh, a little bit of spinning. I've got a little bit of design. Well, I've got a fair bit of design chat, actually. We've got the gift away winner for the lovely uh, B necklace. I'll put a picture in there. So that's coming up. And then I've got some acquisitions and some chit chat at the end to round us out. And we'll see how long this craziness all goes for. Okay. Ba -ba -dum -ba -dum. Oh, and chapters. I always put have um, chapters down below. So if there's a section you aren't interested in, you can just fast forward through that little bit. I'm just looking at my background. It's kind of twisted. I put something different up there today for a little for a little smile, but it's, it's a little, yeah, eh, I just thought slightly different for the background. Um, we are still, or I should say Brad is still, Brad is my husband. Um, we have, we are happily empty nesters. He's been painting our main floor of our house and I still have the contents of my dining room hutch in my room. So it's a little a little tight and I keep bumping these boxes and they're full of fragile things and I didn't wrap them because I just was bringing them from the dining room into my craft room anyway so it's still a little bit of chaos around here um, I will have put a little bit of footage in at the beginning of whatever we've gotten up to over the last couple of weeks we had a trip to Fredericton last Sunday to see our daughter Samantha she had a new dishwasher that needed to be installed. So dad to the rescue, uh, he installed that and I got to hang out with the pets. And uh, we've had, we looked like we were having spring. I took some really pretty footage of my bulbs, you know, the little shoots coming up out of my garden. And two days later, you'll also have seen what happened. We got quite a bit more snow and we've got more coming in the next couple of days. So this is pretty typical for our part of the country, but I'm always in denial that we might actually get some spring in March and April. Okay. Um, what else do I have to say at the beginning? Oh, there is a knit along running. Uh, I've got a sock knit along running. So I'll put the information here. It is the KSH Cal 2024. Um, and that is if you knit any pair, any socks uh, between February 17th and uh, March 31st. Tag me on Instagram, Facebook, use that tag. We are running into some issues with that tag, but or with the hashtag. But if you put my um, at knit sip happy and tag me in it or mention me in your post, I will see it automatically and you'll be entered for the draw. If you're not on any of those social media channels, feel free to email me at the uh, email on the screen, nancy at knitsiphappy.com. I've had a few emails for that already, which is fantastic. I want to try and be as inclusive as, as, as possible with our love of socks. And don't forget, you get two entries if you use one of my sock patterns. You get to, and feel free to double dip. There's a lot of people doing Denise Earth Tones Girls, her book, uh, her sock book, Cal, I can't remember the hashtag. Um, double dip, triple dip, you know, polygamy, polyga, poly polyga dip making up words here, um, feel free to uh, put your socks that you're knitting for my cow into any of the other ones that it would apply for. Okay, 
we are going to move on to what I'm wearing and it's the first FO. So I'm just going to stand up and give you a little tour and I forgot to bring my tablet in for my notes. So I'm going to have to try and remember that or I may have to go and get that. So I'm looking at myself in the screen and not the camera. I'm going to have a little sip before I stand up and give you a tour. So this is my Wilfreda sweater by uh, Venka Rold. I think is how it's pronounced. Um, I'm shamelessly copying uh, Kelly and Noel from uh, the Knit Chat Cafe and my lovely friend Sophie from Cozy Meadow Knits. They have all knit this pattern. And I had this beautiful yarn. There it is from Amanda at Sweet Skein of Mine. I held two skeins together. Um, I had this much left of the fingering. So I've held a fingering weight with this raspberry jam mohair. If you were here last time, you'll have been able to see the yarn a little bit better because this is all I have left. I do have quite a bit of mohair left. The yardage on the skeins was quite a bit different. So I do have a nice little bit of mohair that I'll be able to put into a cowl, a hat, some coastal drift mittens perhaps from La Violette Knits. There's opportunities here. So this was the yarn that I used to knit my Wilfreda. So I'm gonna stand up and give you, and have to move the camera probably or my chair and just give you a little tour. There we go. So I, I love it. It is a little shorter than I was hoping for. I was hoping for another inch and a half, um, but I just ran out of yarn. So what I typically do with my sweaters is I knit the yoke, separate for the sleeves, do a couple of inches, and then I move on and do my sleeves. So that's what I did because I wanted to make sure I had full length sleeves. And then whatever I had left went into the body. So towards the end, I was starting to weigh um, what I had for yarns, what I was using in a round. So I knew how much to allow for the ribbing and for the um, Italian sewn bind off that I did. So I started off this project doing an alternating cable cast on my first time, won't be my last. I've learned some things from that process. Um, and then I did um, an extra set of short rows in the back just to bring the back up a little bit. Um, I feel like this probably stretched out a little bit in blocking. Uh, I think I could probably pull it back in a little bit more. Um, next time I wash it, I won't, I won't pull it out as far. But it's got this beautiful texture and then cable lace kind of yoke pattern that's really addictive and quite fun and just working with this yarn was just so fun the pops and the speckles in the fingering weight yarn just loved it um, i've worn this twice already this week um, usually with a darker wash jean than this but the navy blue pops in this yarn it looks fantastic um, i did helical knit through the sleeves and the body just to make sure I didn't end up with any weird pooling. And I think it looks great. As you know, if you've been here before, when I separate for the sleeves, I always put more stitches on the front of my sweater to make room for my chest because my chest takes up more space physically than the back, which is flat. That's just the setup that works for me. So I have detailed notes on my Ravelry pages that are in um, linked below and if you wanted numbers of how many I actually did move yeah so I am in love with this it is bright and sunny and cheerful and was a joy was a joy to knit so the plan is I, I definitely would like to knit another one and um, with a little more yardage in the fingering weight so I could lengthen the body just a little bit more I've worn it this week with a collared long shirt and that makes me comfortable. I'm not, no, let me rephrase that. I would not wear this without something underneath it because I just don't find that it's long enough for me. Um, and that's fine. I've got, you know, tank tops and, and things I can wear underneath it to uh, just make me feel a little more comfortable around my middle. Um, and I 
think that is all I have to say about Wilfreda. A very happy, um, yes, uh, definitely will be another one in my future. We'll see how soon. I just pulled some yarn out of my stash. I'll show you later in dream knitting and future plans. But um, we're going to move on to the next finished object. And I'm going to have to do a wardrobe change. Hint, hint, I have another garment finished. I'll be right back. All right, so quickly before I move off of Wilfreda, I should just mention the other modification because I messed up when I did my alternating cable cast on, I just started doing one by one rib because that's my default and usually my favorite and it was supposed to be twisted rib. So I had to make sure when I did the cuffs and the hem at the bottom that they were also regular ribbing. I didn't twist my ribbing, but I did do the Italian sewn bind off on all of my edges. So, Wilfreda, and spoiler alert, my Zweig is also done. So, um, Zweig, there were quite a few modifications that I made. So you'll, some of this will be repeats. If you've been here before, you'll have heard me talk about this before, but I'm gonna go through it all because this is my FO, my FO. So I didn't get gauge, I was working off gauge. So I had to do my sweater math. I took, I can't remember what my gauge was. I'll put it up on the screen here. I took um, that number per inch um, and found the pattern, the size and the pattern that would be closest to that inch measurement. And that's what I went with. So I think I did the size six is what I cast on the number of stitches for. I didn't want my uh, fingering weight yarn to be too loose. This is a, a 75-25 sock yarn. I should probably show you these yarns before we keep going. Again, if you've been here before, you will have seen them quite a few times, but totally worth it. This is Circus Tonic Handmade, the 75-25 in Moon Shell. I had four skeins. I still have a full skein left that I didn't touch. So pair of socks, cowl, couple pairs of socks, we shall see. And then I, I used it with this fingering to sport weight, 65% um, silk, 35% mohair base from Yarn Indulgences, but she doesn't carry this base anymore. So those were the yarns that I used. That's what I had left. So I do have quite a bit left of the navy as well. So what I did, um, because I've made a Zweig before and I wasn't happy with the way the neck and the shoulders fit. Um, so I wanted to do some modifications. And when I was cruising through Ravelry, I found a project page that had used Isabel Kramer's Laia pattern. And I've knit that before and showed it here. I'll put a picture in. And in my Ravelry page, I've also linked that Ravelry user. So if you're interested in her notes as well as to how she did this, um, then you can follow along with her notes. So I used the cast on, the short rows, and the increases for Laia. And then when I got close to the first row, I needed to have the correct stitch count to start this color work chart from Zweig. So, um, when I got to the last increase round that I was doing for Laia, I had to change my increase rate because I needed to hit this number just to make my color work section, the first color work section in Zweig work. So my last increase round from Laia was actually a transition between Laia and Zweig. So, and I have put this and talked to this before, there is a tool on um, the internet that you can Google about knitting increase rates. So you put in the stitch count that you have, the stitch count that you want to achieve, and it will tell you how to do that um, to break it down so it's evenly spaced. I will link that down below. I've done it before. It's an amazing tool. I uh, can't recommend it enough. Um, so I used that to get me to the stitch count that I needed for my size of Zweig. I'm just going to stand up and we'll do the rest of the tour. I've got to have a sip of wine first because yik yak yik yak. And I'll probably push the door closed. I forgot to close the door when I was doing my quick change. Okay. Get this chair out of the way. So this one is kind of where I'm very happy with my length. This I am wearing with nothing underneath it. I'm not wearing a tank or a t-shirt. In the winter for layers, I could certainly do that. Um, yeah, I'm thrilled 
this I've worn this a whole bunch this has been finished almost two weeks and I've worn it quite a few times um, the first time that I blocked it I stretched it too much and it was it was the sleeves were down past my fingertips and the body was in the in the frumpy zone for me so I I gave it a quick spritz with some water and I put it in the dryer for five minutes and checked it it was still a little damp so I gave it another five minutes on a low heat um, I don't recommend doing this and walking away from it. You need to keep an eye on it because I didn't want it to uh, felt or come up too much. But this I'm very, very happy with. So, um, Zweig, I'm sure you've seen it before. This beautiful lace panel leading into some color work. And then you do these little one over one cables every so many rows. Some people skip them all together. They do slow your knitting down, but that's not a bad thing for me because stockinette sometimes can bore me to tears. So I really enjoyed having this little texture to do every few rows. And I think it does show up quite nicely on the, uh, the main color yarn. So, you can see is that the fit is really nice around the neck. It's a little closer, which is my preference. I said, um, Wilfreda might be a little bit open for me, but I'm okay with that because I don't want to overheat. This being a fingering weight sweater as well, I'm really happy with this neckline shape and the way it's sitting on my body. Um, I cut some of the, in the rounds after this color work. For the size I was knitting, it wanted you to knit another inch or so. I don't really like that dropped yoke. My natural armpit is actually right here. So I definitely wouldn't want to go any deeper than I have here. I'm, like I said, I'm really happy with the fit. I did my usual, take some stitches from the back to put them on the front to make room for my bust and allow for my flat back. Those specific numbers will be in my Ravelry page. I think I'm just going to sit down now. I, I think you've seen it enough. And then I'm going to try and get into position. Because I'm not planning on moving anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I just did my regular long tail cast on for this neckline because I hadn't done the alternating cable cast on at that point. And but I did do the Italian sewn bind off. I'm, oh, I'm, there we go, maybe that way. On the cuff and on the bottom of the ribbing. I modified the sleeve. The original Zweig has a very long panel of two by two, um, knit one, knit two, purl two ribbing, which I just wanted it to look a little different. So this one, this, kind of ribbing is really nice. I like to have a, a snugger ribbing. For as meaty as my upper arm is, my wrist is very small. So I, uh, I can cuff this back if I want to, which is very helpful for work when I'm in and out of water and be able to pull it up and have it stay. And um, yeah, so really that's modification on the sleeves. I did the body of the sleeve a little longer and then did an elongated rib, but not as long as in the pattern. Is that everything? I love it. This is my second. I don't know if I would do another one because how many of these exact same sweaters do I need in my wardrobe? <laughs> but uh, it was very enjoyable to knit. Uh, I loved the lace. Um, Sophie from Cozy Meadow Knits was showing hers on her last episode and she was talking about having stitch markers in between each lace repeat and I highly second that opinion. Definitely helps if you get distracted or lost. You can find, you know, however many stitch stitches are in that repeat, you can easily find your mistake within that, within those stitch markers if you make one. So yes, Zweig. So I have two finished sweaters for this episode. Um, it is, like I said, it's the beginning of March here in New Brunswick. I should still be able to wear them for at least another month. So, uh, fabulous. Happy, happy, happy. I'm just going to pause you one second and just move some things so I can see my notes a little better without having to, uh, to change the settings a little bit. I'll be right back. All right, there, all set up. Well, kind of. I think I probably hit record a little too soon. Hang on. Just need to.
to put my notes where I can see them. There we go. My third, I was about to say second, my third finished object is, it's got to be a pair of socks. I had shown you last time I had cast on a pair of my Blooming Lovely socks in this amazing Ginger Snap yarn with a name I can't pronounce. Grab it down here. This was in my beautiful Studio Brita bag that I always love to talk about. Britta is a very talented maker in Alberta, Canada, and she, uh, you know, does these beautiful free motion embroidery quilted bags, and you can get them customized if you like. She will customize your colors, um, but she also does really nice um, bags just in her store with cute little crochet designs on them. Um, she appliques knitting and crochet onto the front of the bags as well. Lovely. Love her bags. Heather, my friend in St. John from Wheelhouse Knits, just bought a new one and I'm, I'm feeling very envious, but I'm resisting. So the yarn I used for this is, whoop, there we go, Ginger Snap for out in Alberta as well. This is Dust Fingering in the Weather colorway, so 7525. I didn't weigh this, but I would wager I've got about 36 to 40 grams or so there. So that will be either go into um, mini swaps or I can make a pair of shorties with some contrast. So that is that. Get rid of that bag. Yeah, so this is my Blooming Lovely sock pattern that I did for Knit City uh, Montreal last year. And I had not, I had only knit this pattern once when I knit the sample uh, last year. This time last year, my memories uh, on my Google photos showed me that I was knitting this this time last year. And um, yeah, that was, that's, that's always nice. It's the favorite part about the social media is when they show you memories of things from the past and you can think about them. But I'll just show you this. We've got this really pretty flower panel up the front that runs all the way down the front of the foot and then some broken rib down the side to give it some sucky inness, some pull to make it not too gappy. Sometimes lace can be a little too stretched out. And then a really cute little row of flowers down the back. So this is my perfect recipe of vanilla with a little bit of things happening every couple of rounds and easy to follow. You can chat and watch TV and I love a good meditative, rhythmic, but engaging, not completely mindless knit, just makes me happy and I find it knits up faster. I've got some stuff coming up and it's got a quite a fair bit of stockinette activity and I ended up on my phone on Instagram and YouTube answering comments and I need to do that anyway, but anyway, I, I find I get bored just round and round stockinette and I've told you this before if you've been here. So two that's finished. Um, these are for me so they will be going into my brand new shiny sock organizer that I got off of Amazon. If you're interested I have a little video showing how I organize my socks. I'll put the link up here or here wherever it goes and I'll put the link below. I'm not affiliated with Amazon but if you have socks or things to organize uh, these little cube things are fantastic. I'm, what, six, seven weeks in using mine and I love it. Really happy. My only regrets is I didn't get the set, the set for 72. Oh, mohair. Okay, so that's it for my FOs. We're going to move on to whips and we're going to start with socks. Of course we are. And I will show you the existing one first. So when I cast on Blooming Lovely, they were cast on to start um, in support of my knit along that's going on. As I said at the beginning, I have a sock knit along. So I cast on Blooming Lovely and Njord, the Njord socks. I cast these on on February, I think I was a day late. I might've done it in the evening on the 17th, but I'd had a very busy day at work, Saturdays I work. So this is a DK sock. I'm using fingering weight held double. I have one sock finished. And what you get with this is a really fun cable pearl slip stitch kind of detail running down the front and a slip stitch pearl band up the back of the leg. My traditional 
slip stitch heel, flap and gusset, but you, you do you, you pick the heel that you love. I have a rounded toe on all of my patterns as well, which fits my foot the best. But um, as with any, with any sock pattern, you kind of take what you want and uh, use what you want. You don't have to do what I do just because it's my favorite, but this is what's written in the pattern. And let that blow out. There we go. That color is perfect. So I'm going to show you the yarn. I am using Ducky Darlings that I got that I got at the uh, Perth Festival of Yarn last September. There we go. And this was their Show Colorway Perth Darling. Come on. I said I'm playing around with the settings on this camera and some of it's working, some of it's not. Um, so this is the skein of yarn and I'm pulling from the inside and the outside of the ball using a button to control the twist. I talked about this on my last episode and I do have a uh, video tutorial that I did showing this. So um, I will have that linked below. And I am working on the second sock. I am just ready to start the heel flap. So I was knitting on this a little bit this morning when I was watching the pre-race show for the Formula One, the Saudi Arabia Formula F1 race happened actually yesterday, Saturday the 9th. We worked all day yesterday and then we were out to friends for dinner. So I was out of the house for about 17 hours yesterday. <laughs> it was a long day. Um, so we haven't watched the race yet. So I watched the pre-race show this morning before I came to chat with you. And after I'm going to be sitting down with Brad um, and probably another glass of wine and watching the race. So I'm avoiding all social media spoilers at this point because I still don't know who won and I would rather not until I see the end of it. Anyway, digression. So I'm working on the second sock. I said, I'm just ready to start the slip stitch heel flap and I'll probably work on that while I'm watching the race and editing this afternoon would be my guess. It's living in my first Mrs. Brown's bag. I think this was a Malabrigo colorway if I, my brain is correct, which it's been a long time, so it's quite possibly not. And where are we going next? Let's do another pair of socks. My son's uh, girlfriend is her birthday. Um, it's his birthday in a week and a half and it's her birthday the first week of April. So I wanted to knit her some shorties. So I went into my stash and grabbed some odds and sods, some part balls of this and that's with contrast to my goal this year to be using up more of my scraps. And I've cast on just a simple, so Cassandra has a wide foot, so I do a 72 stitch for her, but she has a very short foot. I think she only has a size five. So I've cast on, get rid of these tails. So I've just cast on with the contrast color, which is a Drops Fable, dark pink, I do believe. And then this is some leftover Regia design line, Arnie and Carlos. Uh, the colorway will be linked to my Ravelry page. And I'm just doing a simple slip stitch. I'm doing, um, it's five stitches, and then I'm slipping the stitch two rounds and knitting. So I'm getting this nice elongated stitch in this, in this, in between this field of stockinette. So 72 stitches, I was just looking for something that was divisible into that. I find eight can be too wide, so six work. So it's basically slip one, knit five, slip one, knit five around, slip one, knit five, slip one, knit five, all the way around. And the uh, third round, you just knit all of the stitches. I did my slip stitch heel flap, gusset, turn. I'm still, oh my, did I finish the... I can't remember if I finished the, I don't think I finished the decreases yet. I might have. And then I just have to work down probably to here because she has a very, like I said, she has a size five foot. So I'm easily going to be able to get this pair of shorties. I know I'm playing fast and loose. I said I was never going to knit leftover shorties top down again, but here I am. I needed something easy for company with out for dinner with friends last night. And I didn't want to have to faff around with a heel that I wasn't familiar with. So I've gone, I said, I'm living on the edge. I know this was 36 grams. I'll do a little bit more on the foot and weigh. And if I'm getting too close to 18, I'll start striping in with the hot pink. And uh, 
we'll get it done that way. But I figured I'd do her a couple pair of shorties for her birthday. So this is the first pair. The second pair is going to be with some leftover Felici. I knit myself or my daughter. I think I might have knit, I can't remember. This is a very old Felici. They bring it back occasionally. This is uh, Time Traveler. So it's a Doctor Who colorway. But I knew I would have enough. I have two part balls. Felici comes in 50 gram balls. I've got two part balls in here and I just pulled this um, agate heather nitpick stroll out of my stash because it pulls out the tan in the uh, sock yarn. So I'll do, like I said, two down and dirty quick um, shorties for her. Needs to be ready by April 8th. That should be doable unless things get a little more hectic than they already are and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So this is living in my lovely chestnut fibers bag. I will link Chris below. Um, she does really great bags and uh, drawstring. Her drawstring are my favorites. I know she does do zippered ones as well. So what's next? Let's do my test knit. I showed you this last time. This is test knit for Amy Palco of the Meaningful Stitch. Hang on. Mm. And it's a three color cowl. And I am using, these are my three colors. This was a Hedro Yarns, this is Creative Knitter, and this was Legacy Lane Fiber. All of the information will be linked in my project page below. That color is actually pretty good. I was having a hard time showing the pink last time. That's actually a pretty good representation. So I'm using these three colors in a colorwork cowl. And I have made some really good progress. So it started with a provisional cast on. I showed, I talked about this the last time using the um, try-on cables or knitting barber cords to do a provisional cast on. I used the Laura Nelkin um, video tutorial. And a couple days after I posted my video, I was watching my friend Leanne and she had also done the same technique because she's also test knitting this cowl in beautiful neutral colors where mine is quite vibrant. Uh, Leanne has done hers in beautiful neutral natural yarn colors. So if you're, I'm sure you're all watching Leanne of the Nitty Stew, um, but uh, always has amazing projects and shows us beautiful parts of mostly Canada, which I love to see. Cowl. Let's get back to this. This is called the Gither Cowl. It's going to be launching at the Scottish um, Yarn Shows show. I think it's a Scottish Wool Producers, March 23rd. So today's the 10th. I still have less than two weeks to get this done and I'm good, I'm on track. So this first section has the pink as the main color and then the light blue and the teal as the contrast colors. And then we shift. We shift into the darker teal color being the main color with the contrast being the light blue and the pink. And then we shift again and we are the light blue colors with the teal and the pink. So this is going to be a long, it gets twisted. It's going to get provisionally, it's going to, sorry, it's going to get grafted at the end with a couple of twists in it. So when you wear it, you'll be able to see all of the facets of this with the colors showing and I I can't wait. This is mine, 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 mine. It's so soft and squishy and I love the colors. Um, you know, I love my brighter, vibrant colors. I'm not a neutral fan. Um, so this is making me very happy. It's a very addictive knit, quite easy to read your knitting as you go. I don't look at the pattern very often. Um, I have to every now and again, just for this little, this little change here, this third section. Sometimes I, I get confused in here, but it's a quick refer to the chart and off I go again. So next time you see this, the pattern will all be already be released. So I'll be sharing pictures on Instagram and, uh, and Facebook. So keep an eye out for that. Yeah, I'm knitting this on a 16 inch circular 
my Chowgu interchangeable twist set. And it's just perfect round and round. Lovely, lovely, lovely. That's it. I'm having a Mrs. Brown's bag day. This is in my one of my newer ones, the, the bigger canvas Mrs. Brown bag. And then I had a very cheeky cast on. After I finished these two sweaters, I had after I finished I finished this one first. I finished the bag first. And I knew Wilfredo was gonna be finished pretty quickly. So I started swatching with some yarn that I wanted to use. Uh, we had knit night middle of February last month and my friend Rochelle was doing a test knit. I can't remember what the garment is. She was doing a test knit and a yarn that we had both bought together from Knit Picks and mine was still sitting in stash. And I, I was, it was so nice. The fabric was really lovely. And I thought, yeah, I wanna knit with that next. So I pulled it out of my stash and swatched. I should grab the yarn and the swatch. So the yarn I'm talking about is from Knit Picks. It is their Upcycle, come on, there we go. Upcycle Alpaca Blend, sport weight. Uh, in the colorway Olive. So it is 273 yards for 100 grams. So I'm actually knitting this at a DK gauge. And I will show you my swatch. Oh, hang on one second. So the yarn, we were it's 33% alpaca, 34% wool, and 33% acrylic. And there's some kind of recycling, reusable, it's upcycled. So they've, they've upcycled fibers from, I can't remember where. Um, I know they did still have some stuff on their website. It was on sale um, on their website a couple of weeks ago. So we've done a cheeky order. Rochelle, uh, Sophie, Cozy Meadow Knits and I have done another order to get the free shipping. And I've got another sweater quantity of this arriving because I was enjoying the knit so much. So that's the yarn. This is the swatch. So it, um, uh, it required a knit in the flat portion plus a knit in the round. So I started with knitting flat, so I knit back and forth on this section. This pearl bump line shows where I switched to in the round because I wanted to make sure my gauge was the same for both, and it was. And I blocked this, and it is beautiful. It is so soft. Not a hint of alpaca prickle. There is a little bit, you can see there, it's a little bit fluffy. There is definitely alpaca, but it's not the, the, the rough guard hairs. It's very, very soft. Um, and not something I really have much in my wardrobe. So um, I am knitting the Ginger Snap by Libby at Truly Myrtle. I'll put some pictures in here. I've wanted to knit it for quite a while. She had a ginger bread um, that was the original uh, garment in this series and it had a wider boat neck, which is not my jam. She released Ginger Snap, I believe two years ago with a more closed in neckline. And I was like, yes, please. So I've always wanted to knit that because I do love Libby's patterns. I love the way they fit. Um, my coworker and friend, Amanda, who has started knitting in the last year um, is knitting one. And I was helping her um, with some, you know, there's some, there were some new techniques in, in the pattern. So uh, we've had some knitting sessions together and I saw hers with the beautiful rib detail that we'll have seen. And I was like, I think that's what I want to knit with that yarn. So that's what I've done. As I said, it's only March. I was thinking it's a DK gauge. I should be able to get this sucker finished and still be able to wear it before the weather turns. <laughs> If I was sensible, I should have picked up my Isabel Kramer, the name escapes me, picture name. I have an Isabel Kramer that I hibernated last year because it's knit in coast, holst coast held single. So it's very fine and lightweight and drapey and airy, but, and I hibernated it because I was coming into winter and I knew I wasn't gonna be able to wear it anyway. So I should have probably picked that one up and started knitting on it, but I wasn't feeling it. It's still cold and chilly and damp and yuck most days here. So I was feeling the need for some squishy. So let me show you where I'm at. So 
so the ribbing is picked up and done later so it's just cast on it is a drop shoulder it's not I'm, I'm lying to you it's got set in sleeves so you're knitting a sleeve cap short row sleeve cap here so you knit the back and then you come back and pick up your fronts and knit your front separately till you join and then you join everything in the round. So this is on a very short cable at the bottom because I, as you can see, I've put the body on hold to knit the sleeves. I have done one sleeve with all of my decreases. Actually, I've started to take, see that big void there with no stitch markers on? That's where I'm at on the other sleeve. So this is where I'm at, but this is the showstopper with this garment is this really fun uh, twisted rib cuff detail that happens on the rib and the cuff of the sleeves. So I did a try on for length and I feel pretty confident in this. So I've started the second sleeve and my sleeve has Kermit and Miss Picky on there, my little stit and my needle stoppers. And my needle stoppers on the body are my glasses of red wine that I got from Kim and Colin at Ginger, Slap, Ginger Snap last year at Knit City, Montreal. So I'm loving this and working on the sleeve right now is just a nice meditative rhythmic with the decreases every so often and I'll get that done next couple of days, I hope, and then I can get back to the body and just get cruising on that. So my goal is to have this finished next time, I, next time that I see you in three weeks. What are we, the 10th? So May, March, ugh, end of March, beginning of April, Easter weekend? Could be Easter weekend because we're going to have a guest with us for two and a half weeks. I'll talk about that a little later, maybe. So um, that project is living in my lovely sheet bag from Eldenwood Crafts. I've been drooling over the East Anglia Yarn Festival footage on Instagram. Uh, Emma has a booth there and is showing her yarn as well as her beautiful bags. So if you are in England, I managed to get to the East Anglia Yarn Festival. Yay you! Uh, it looked amazing. So um, that's it for my garments this time around. I put something. The other thing I've been knitting on, outside of design chat, hang on, is sock heels. I've got a random, well they're not random, um, Fiddlehead Fiber Festival is coming up on April 12th and 13th in Florenceville, Bristol in New Brunswick. If you are anywhere in the area, I highly recommend coming. It's a great time, a great show. We get to stay in the hotel all together and we have knit chat evenings with a little bit of, speaking of which, wine. And um, yeah, it's amazing. It was Last year was its first time and it was such a good time. This year it's in a new location because it can be bigger and better. Hang on. Alpaca on my lips probably. And Robin asked me if I would teach a class. Last year I did a little session um, talking about how I modify my knits, but it was real it was a little more informal. There is a website for Fiddlehead Fiber Festival. All of the classes are now available for sale and you can also pre-buy your ticket. I think it's five dollars for both days very inexpensive. I'll put the website on the screen. It'll also be linked below. And I'm going to be doing a sock heel clinic. I'm going to be talking about the different styles of heels, top down, cup, top down, toe up, um, short row, heel flap and gusset, afterthought, all kinds of different styles of heels how they perform and how they work, what their pros and cons are in each kind of sock and the style of yarn that you're using and how you can modify them to either fit your foot or fit the yarn. As I've said before, heel flap and gusset is my favorite, but there is a time and a place for a short row heel and or an afterthought heel, depending on your yarn. So that's my spiel about my class. So 
it's not going to be a hands-on knitting class. It's going to be a me talking and showing a show and tell kind of class. Shoot, I just dropped a heel. Oh well, um, I can't, I'm not going to disturb my precarious setup here and dig and go find it. So I've just been knitting a cuff, five rounds of plain, and then doing a heel. This is a fish lips kiss. This is my modified fish lips kiss. And this is a heel flap and gusset, but it's a square heel turn. And the other one I dropped is my traditional French round heel flap and gusset. So I'm working on, I haven't blocked them or anything yet, which is why they're all curling up. Um, I will be blocking them and they'll be pictured. Anyway, it's going to be a handout and all this good stuff. So what I'm working on now is I'm just knitting a small tube and I'm going to cut an afterthought heel into this one. So I'm using all this bright yellow deep stash yarn and I'm just kind of inserting heels in different ways. I'm using leftover sock yarns that were in my stash. These three are opal. This is a Patton's Croy and I'm just, I'm just knitting a little bit of sock and then some heels and then I'm making notes and working on my class as I go, things, points, and this, this and that. So it's going to be 90 minutes, and we're going to get deep, dark into sock nerd at range. We're going to be, yeah, I, I hope people who were signed up will enjoy it. I'm really enjoying already comparing these little swatches. I've never really done a side-by-side -side comparison like that. I know in my head what the differences are and why, but to actually see it in these little, these little swatch, heel swatches, is yeah it's taking my sock nerdism through the roof i took this to dinner last night and we were trying uh, you know wondering what i was doing and trying to explain and i'm all excited and their eyes are glazing over <laughs> so um i'm just gonna flash this really quickly it's an acquisition i told you about last time I have all of the this stuff sitting in this basket. So Savoy Baskets, Doris Ann um, did me a custom basket that I wanted. I had seen this color on Sophie from Cozy Meadow Knits. Her podcast had this color, but my friend uh, Rachel had gotten this swing handle basket at um, our winter gathering in Sussex, and this was what I wanted. So Doris Ann very kindly did a custom basket for me and I love it. Love it, love it. So as I said, it's just holding all my goodies in here for these sock heels for my class. Um, so I've got four knit. I've got the fifth on the needles. I think I've got to do about another four, maybe five samples showing different techniques and ways to modify and how it changes the look. So heels aren't my favorite things to knit when I'm knitting a sock, but they're amazing. That little that feat of engineering feet get it that's a that's a leanne nitty stew pun i'm i'm hope i'm worthy um it's a feat of engineering the way we or we're knitting this 3d item down straight and then we make this 90 degree turn and it fits our feet it's amazing <laughs> nerd um okay another quick thing i want to show you um I had a bag full of scraps from swaps. So these are scraps that were under 10 grams. So as I've been making minis for swaps or and or my advent calendar, anything that was under 10 grams, I just shoved in this Ziploc bag. And I was gonna make a magic knot ball. And Heather, from Wheelhouse Knits showed something on Instagram. She showed her husband making her magic knot ball and I thought, genius. So I asked Brad very kindly if he would take this bag of scraps, I showed him how to do the magic knot and just put, put together whatever he wanted, whatever he wanted. He, this is dense, man. He's, he's wound it really tight. <laughs> it probably weighs almost a pound. <laughs> So when he's been bored of being on his phone on TikTok, he's been making this magic knot ball for him. And now I'm trying to figure out what other scraps I've had, I have, or kicking around for him to make me another one. Um, 
but this will go into a blanket project of some sort. I picked up some liquid stitch off of Amazon on um, K Crazy Sock Lady's uh, recommendation. So I will probably, I've had a magic knot come apart once in my original granny stripe. So I thought I would try the liquid stitch. So um, these magic knots have not been trimmed or anything. So I'll, I'll know when they're coming up. I can add the liquid stitch to them at that point and uh, hopefully keep my blanket more secure. But I have to show you, there's some bigger chunks of yarn in this bag. So Brad grabs one of these and tries to make his magic knot ball and the yarn just pulled right apart when he tugged it because it's a single. I'd forgotten I'd put some beautiful singles from leftovers in there as well. And they'll be great to do minis or to do use for other things, but you can't magic knot them because the single ply doesn't hold to the, the tugging, the pressure you're putting on it. So it turns out there's about five different singles in here. So I, I, you know, once he's like, why is this tearing apart? So I said, oh, it's a single ply. You can see it's not twisted and it, you know, feels differently. Damn me if he didn't go through the rest and go, oh, well, this is a single ply. Oh, this is a single ply as well. Fast learner, that man. He's a keeper. <laughs> so I have all these singles in here that have to go into something else, but... I just had to share. It's yarny content. It's It will be into a blanket at some point. And this is just, yeah, well done, my darling husband. So we're going to call, we're going to put a line under whips. I'm going to do a quick little spinning update in the fact I haven't actually done much. As, as I said at the beginning, it's been a busy three weeks. Um, so, but I did manage to finish plying up. I just want to, I'm just going to try and blow this out and then get it a little closer because that's way brighter than it is. Come on there. That's the color. So if you remember, I had spun these pretty um, hyacinthy blue purpley kind of Rolex that were very kindly gifted to me from Kirsty at Wool and Wishes when I met her and Tracy at the Southern Wool Show. So I spun up a hot pink sing, um, single to ply with it. I've just two plied and really pretty. It's not my most even spin. I found the roll legs. I find roll legs difficult. I'm not a long draw spinner. So I find the roll legs can be a little difficult, difficult to control the, th the thickness. So I have plied and I have washed this, but I haven't weighed and measured it yet. So I will weigh and measure it at some point and tuck it in my stash, but you will not see this again until I knit with it. So that's a short and sweet spinning. Um, I have not started this project we were talking about last time. It's still sitting here. I just haven't had the time to devote to any spinning this, this time around. On to design chat. So I'm going to start first with something I, I have that I not I, that I don't have to show you, but I'm going to show you pictures. My sequel to the tits up um, pattern that I put out last year is uh, on the needles. It is in testing. I can't show you it because I don't have the sample yarn yet. Deborah from Yarn Indulgences is going to be dyeing me up a custom colorway. Um, we're going to be, it, the yarn and the pattern are both going to be part of a breast cancer fundraiser that happens the first week of April that will end at the Fiddlehead Fiber Festival on April 12th or 13th. I'm not sure yet. So Deborah is bringing in a brand new base for this color and she's been in the middle of a move as well. So we just haven't gotten it yet. Um, I have put the pattern into testing and my testers are pretty much almost done most of them and so I'm going to insert some pictures up here as I'm talking I'm just going to kind of do a rotation I'm going to take some um, shots some downloads from our Instagram chat group where, we, where I run the test knit and there's been some great feedback a couple of the knitters have said they prefer who tested tits up said they prefer it to tits up so first thing is I'm showing you these pictures and the name of this pattern is Titty Gaga. It'll be on the screen, I'm trying to find something that isn't on Ravelry, that is a little fun, a little whimsical, and um, 
yeah, so that was what I found. That is what the name of this pattern is going to be. You can see there's a central panel running down the center of the sock with that boob motif. Boob motif. Um, it's different from last year's. It's a different technique to get those, those round shapes. And um, I put two lace panels on the side, again with two sets of, dare we say, nipples running up the side of each of the pearl panels surrounding the central motif. And on the back, I've also put the panel of nipples running up the back because you know I love a little interest in the back of my sock. So I will be showing you um, some pictures of that. Um, testing has gone really well. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled. Everybody's loving the pattern and we've been having lots of punny conversations of, as usual, can you see my tits in this yarn and, uh, and all kinds of fun, fun boob jokes that we've been having in uh, my test, the test group. Uh, yeah. So I will, next time I'm here, I will show you the actual yarn and my socks knit up in it because we'll be almost ready to launch the pattern by then, uh, which is crazy that we're next time I see you will be coming up to Easter close to after Easter. I'm not sure. And um, yeah, so that's one pattern incoming and that one's coming first. Um, and the next one that I have on the needles, I'm going to be showing you Kim from Ginger Snap. I showed you, I showed you the yarn last time? No. Yes, I did show you the yarn last time. Kim said very kindly that I can be showing the yarn, so I have, and I did. I will show you again. I'll put a picture up. It's easier than all the little skeins. As you remember last time as I bobbled them, trying to get them into rainbow order color. Um, Kim is going to, Kim and Colin um, for Knit City Toronto. These are exclusives for Knit City Toronto. They are going to have three different rainbow sets of a kind. So the one I've been working with is called Over the Rainbow. The other one is Broken Rainbow. And the other one is Rave, Rave Rainbow. It's a black light reactive. If I'm wrong, I'll put it on the screen, but you'll have seen pictures as well. So, it is a 100 gram skein is what I got from Kim um, in the light gray silver fox. She's also going to be offering concrete, which is a mid gray, and onyx, which is a dark gray to black, I would guess. So I've done a little spoiler on Instagram, and but I wanted to show you guys here first the full sock. I've just finished knitting the first sock and um, I'm a little bit in love with it because it's beautiful. <laughs> the colors are just, come on, come on. There we go. Sorry if that blinded you. So we've got this light silver fox gray leading into some pearl bump stripes, leading into hearts, my first true color work design. I've done mosaic before, but not stranded. These hearts are stranded color work in the six colors, and then another round of the pearl stripes heading into some wider stripes to finish off the foot because we had to use, I was thinking of doing the foot, the plain gray, but I still had so much left of the colors and they're just so, so joyful. So we've got some thicker stripes happening there. It is my traditional heel flap and gusset with my rounded toe. It is worked cuff down and it will be launching at Knit City Toronto. So I keep looking in the screen because I, I just, I flip and love it. <laughs> so there are obviously, um, there is obviously a seam kind of happening on the other side. I'm showing you the other side um, where your color rounds join. I wove in the ends as I went on the pearl stripes. I found that quite easy. I couldn't do it on the hearts. It was messing with my tension. So there are ends that have to be woven in separately here, unless you're better at keeping color work tension than I am doing the Stephen West Weave and Stephen method, which is what I usually use. And then like I said, we've got this seam, but on the thicker stripes on the bottom, I did do a jogless join, which I think was pretty effective for the most part. You can see I've got an, an elongated larger gray stitch there but it's definitely a smoother join than I would have gotten otherwise. But what I will do for the second sock is I will just rotate the heel. This was put um, on whatever side you either put, 
back up. So when I have designs like this that have a seam, I want that seam to be on the inside of the leg. So I want the, the other seam to be here on the inside of the, of the leg on the other leg. So I will add the heel on the back like I normally would. And on the second stock, I will add the heel, the heel on the front of the foot. So that just brings that seam. So I don't have the seam on an outer edge and an inner edge. It will both be on the inner edge or both on the outer edge, depending on how you put your sock on. But yeah, so this is this is the perfect side without the magic loop or the, the round join. I worked these on nine inch circulars. Did my usual 2.25 for the uh, ribbing and the stockinette and the stripes. When I got into the color work, I came up to a 2.5 millimeter needle. You will have to figure out your own gauge. I've got good stretch in there. So I'm very happy with the tension. So that's easily going over my heel. I've tried it on. I got good stretch there with my 2.5 but I do find a nine inch circular does work really well for me in the round because I don't have the magic loop um, laddering that happens, especially with color work. But double po it'll work on double points, two 16 inch circulars. However you like knitting your needles, this will work. As with all of my patterns, this will be written needle neutral. So you can adjust it to be any, you, there's no needle one, two, three, four. I just write it for any needle. I don't specify. Isn't it glorious? So that's it for design chat today. I, I don't have anything coming out for you for uh, until April, but I did want to show you this design. I have a name in my head. I'm not sure if that's what I'm going with yet. I'm going to hold off on talking about that yet to see, just to see. I'm going to take this off the blocker, put it back in the bag. So I'm going to be knit working on Tuesday. I have the day off of my day job. I'm going to be writing up this pattern because as soon as the Titi Gaga socks finish testing, this will be going into testing. As I said last time, I have some testers who knit all, if not all, most of my patterns. And um, I don't want to ruin that record. So I'm, I'm trying to do the test knits back to back, not overlapping. All right. Notes, 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 notes. Let's do the giveaway. All right. If you were here last time, I had a 4K gift away is what we're calling it when we're typing it because we don't want any spam bots. And good news, folks, we had none. We had no, no intruders into our lovely group causing chaos. It is for a knit stitch necklace from Jeanette Walker. I will showed you a picture. I'm wearing mine on, <laughs> I'm wearing mine little fishy one that I got at um, PI Fiber Festival. And I just got my new chain, my longer chain. Um, Jeanette very kindly, she was supposed to be coming to Sussex, couldn't make it because she was ill. Very kindly popped this beautiful longer chain for me in the mail. And I got it last week, I do believe. Perhaps the week before. Time is blurring. So I have in a little bag with a full description from Jeanette and a little gift bag that we'll be going with. I did the draw this morning. I did a random comment picker on YouTube. We had 350, 60 something comments using the word B because this is a B stitch marker necklace. And the winner is, I'm going to put the um, shot on the screen. It's Joy. It's Joy. Joy has been a subscriber since July of 2022, which is when I started these shenanigans. So I was so happy to see this go to one of my original subscribers and watchers. Um, congratulations, Joy. I'm not sure where you are in the world. If you could reach out to me, the email on the screen or it is linked below a clickable link you can email me and we'll chat i'll get your address and then i will see about shipping for this i think i'm probably going to have to pay for tracking for this to for it to be secure but we'll see what our postal options are once i know where in the world that you are so congratulations joy thank you so much for all of you who left comments um it was a busy three weeks um having little chit chats and just saying thank you a lot of them it was just thank you um 
I didn't have time necessarily to have full chats with you. And I apologize for that because you know I love, love coming into the conversation, having a little chat with you in, in the comments. If you take the time to leave a comment, it is greatly, greatly appreciated. So Joy, email me and we'll get this out to you as soon as I can. So that's the gift away winner. Next, we're going to do some dream knitting. So my Wilfreda I just showed you. I've been holding on to this yarn combo. I'm just going to show it to you from Sweet Skein of Mine. Amanda, there we go. I bought this in May of 2020 during all of the COVID shutdowns. Amanda is my lovely friend in Fredericton. This was her monthly color. It's called Mayflowers. And I've got two skeins of each of the mohair and the fingering. This is her old fingering weight base that has higher yardage. It has 463 yards. The Yarnia that I used in my Wilfreda that I showed you earlier had 420. I can't remember. It's the thicker two ply 80 20 where this is a 75 25. So this has a more more yardage. I've been saving this to do another Elton cardigan and then Hohe brought out an Elton sweater and I thought okay I'll just move it to that. Now I'm thinking should I do a Wilfreda with this? but it's a little banana bonkers. Is it, is it too nutty for a Wilfreda? Should I separate out the mohair and do the Elton sweater? Let me know what you think. Do you think, oh, I'm so sorry. That was a sock blocker that just jumped off my little stand here. What do we think? Wilfreda or Elton sweater? I'll have pictures of both, but you'll see my Wilfreda. Oh, the other thing I forgot, my Wilfreda. Beep, 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 back up an hour. Um, I didn't do the short rows at the back because I didn't have enough yarn. So if I used this yarn for the Wilfreda, I'd have the yardage I needed to make the body a little longer and perhaps do the short rows in the back. Or the Elton sweater. With the full understanding that drop shoulders are not my favorite design. I'm almost talking myself out of Elton, but I'm in, I would, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, blow out. There we go. Whew. What do you think? Answers down below. Elton or Wilfreda? So that's dream knitting. Um, I'm, I possibly could have this on the needles before I see you next. What has to go on the needles next, however, is this beautiful silken linen in the very Wilfreda color. I'm obviously channeling that color. I think I look really good in it. <laughs> toot toot. We're over an hour, it's starting to get a little silly as it usually does. I have two skeins of this lovely silk and linen blend from Yarn Indulgences. My friend Deborah gifted this yarn to me to knit a summer t-shirt and it's going to be a sample either on my body or hanging in the booth at Fiddlehead Fiber Festival and Knit City Toronto. So I'm again pondering what my options are. I'm leaning towards a saltier tea. The last saltier tea I did, I cropped it um, to wear with a black dress. But I want a longer one to wear with jeans. And I think this color would be beautiful to wear with um, my lighter wash jeans that I wear in the summer. So saltier tea is in the lead for that right now. I think it would be a great sample to show in the booth. Um, if you saw this week, if you were on Instagram, social media, anywhere, you will have seen Samantha Guerin uh, released her Salty Air sweater, which is DK gauge. As you know, DK for me is hit or miss. As I say that, I'm knitting the ginger snap at a DK gauge by knitting in a sport weight yarn. Potato, potato. So this will be the next garment on my needles. Um, I, I won't swatch because I've knit with this yarn so much. And I just need to check my previous silk and linen garments to see uh, what my uh, gauge, I need a 24 stitch gauge, I do believe. Um, so I just need to check my previous garments because I know one, of the, one or two of them is about a 24 stitch gauge to be able to use this yarn without having to swatch. Because I'm going to want all of it to uh, make sure I've got a nice, you know, 
a good cover the bicep t-shirt length with a longer body with my a-line shaping for my pear shape that is the goal so this will be the next garment on my needles inside of sock design knitting and sock heel knitting for my class and finishing that ginger snap so dream knitting really want your opinions on this one give me guidance my friends and um yes so that is dream knitting future knitting um that's coming up acquisitions acquisitions i showed you my doris and my savoir basket already i mentioned last time i I was heading to knit night that week that I was going to be getting a couple of pouches and stitch marker combinations from my lovely friend Sophie at Cozy Meadow Knits. So she brought all of them to knit night for me to choose from. So I chose these two. Beautiful. They're nice and squishy quilted pouches and stitch markers to go with them. So I thought this was the perfect pairing and <laughs> front and back, front and back. This was a perfect pairing with this one. So these are going to be prizes for my sock knit along. Thank you so much, Sophie. I tried to pay her and she refused. I think if you were here last time, I said that I was gonna win the argument over money. I didn't, I lost. She didn't fight fair. She had my the hand spun that I gifted her for Christmas. And she said that because I'd gifted her the high at Christmas, she wanted to gift these for the podcast. So thank you so much, my friend. Um, I'm sure whoever receives this will be very, very grateful. So these will be going um, into the sock knit along. I don't know whether I'll pair them with yarn or whether they'll go with standalone gifts. Um, I've got prizes coming in still. So I just want to, uh, I will decide that. And before... Yeah, I guess the next time I see you, the cow will have ended. So I may come on and do a little short video um, showing all of the prizes and as a little reminder to make sure you get your entries in. So um, I have some more Turtle Pearl to show you. Um, Emily from Turtle Pearl, as I said, has been shopping in my small business. Hang on, everything's in a bag. I don't want to make too much noise and mess. No, it's not going to happen. So Emily was in and dropped off my latest order for the barter and she very kindly offered to gift um, a set, a sock, one of her sock sets to the podcast. And I said, choose whichever you want. And she chose City Girl. And if you remember, if you were here before Christmas, I used the City Girl uh, self-striping yarn from Emily at Turtle Pearl. This is the fingering weight yarn, by the way. This is fingering, comes in two matching 50 gram skeins. I used this set to knit a pair of socks for my sister-in-law's mother, Roxy. She's a lovely lady and I was thrilled to do it. Um, I didn't have the mini to go with mine. So I just used a gold yellow out of my stash and it made the most beautiful pair of Bucktouche Boardwalk socks. So whoever wins this sock set, I will gift you a pair. Of, uh, I will gift you the pattern of the Bucktouche Boardwalk socks so you can we can you can you can have matching socks to Roxy and me because I've got enough left I'm going to be knitting me a pair of Booktouche Boardwalk socks in this because I loved the combination so much so this was a very kind gift from Emily at Turtle Pearl to the podcast to use for a prize for the knit along thank you so much Emily and then I ordered this one for you guys this is called Ohm with the green mini. I'll show you the back. It's the fingering weight set again. And it's this beautiful rainbow stripe, but not striped rainbow. It's kind of coming in and out in thicker and thinner stripes. I thought it was, it was stunning on her website and it's even better in person. And I think I'm liking this different setting on my camera. It seems to be showing the colors really well except for the occasional blowout on the white. But, so this is also going into the prize pool for the knit along. And then I grabbed a, another set of the all sorts of fun. I'm sorry, this one isn't for you guys. This is a gift for somebody. I'm gonna be sending this out as a gift. So, all sorts of fun mimics licorice all sorts You've, if you've been around, you've seen I've knit two pairs. I did afterthought everything socks with 
my licorice all sorts, all sorts of fun. I took this around England and Scotland on my holidays last August and September, and they were a dream to knit. I think that is it for acquisitions. So as I said, I do have an order coming from Knit Picks um, that I went in with my friends. I will show you that yarn next time. I bought some of that Alpaca Upcycle Sport Weight to go on um, two colors to do a color work yoke. And I bought a really fun Surrey Alpaca thick yarn, thick fluffy yarn, um, which will either be a ranunculus or perhaps a Wilfreda or a Lento or it's knitted, a, it should be able to be knitted a loose gauge. I'll show you next time. So general chit chat. It's been a busy old three weeks. Um, if you are anywhere, you know, retail in January and February can be a little bit, um, quiet. So the first six weeks of the new year in my small business was scarily quiet. Um, so I had lots of great time at home to be doing, uh, knit work and, um, but things have picked up. Uh, it's gotten quite busy. So I'm working extra more hours than I normally do, which is fine but it does mean I have a little less time for the knit work that needs to be accomplished right now as well. So plus a bit of the chaos from the painting that's being done. Brad's doing it in small chunks. So my dining room still is full of paint trays, paint cans, brushes, rollers, drop cloths is what my dining room consists of, which is why I still have all of the, my dining room fragile things are in my craft room. So it's a bit chaotic around the house, a um, bit chaotic at work, but great. Happy to see everybody back looking for to make their wines for the uh, summer, spring, summer season coming up. I started the wines for Samantha's wedding this week. So that was exciting as well. Uh, we drove to Fredericton, I mentioned earlier on Sunday morning, we got up early. It's about two hours, an hour and 45 minutes to her house. So we, we got up and out early and got to her house. Um, it was pouring rain all day. So the dog and the cat, which I was looking after while they were putting the dishwasher in, were wet and gross. <laughs> and the cat, Oscar, is such a little bugger. He he kind of puts himself on my lap and he's still got his claws. So then he's kneading me with his claws. So I'm picking claws up out of my leg. And then he turns around and gives me this look going, I'll fix you, lady. Puts his paw in the loop of my magic loop sock needle that I was knitting on and pulls it. <laughs> yeah, little... Bleep, bleep. So I had to put my sock away and then Archie was just full of shenanigans. We are actually going to be keeping Archie for two and a half weeks. Uh, Samantha is going to Europe to meet up with Rob. Rob is in Latvia right now, deployed with the Canadian military. He has got two weeks of leave. They are meeting up in Greece and they're going to have a lovely time, but we have Archie for two and a half weeks. So Easter weekend, there's going to be nothing happening other than puppy sitting because well, he's not a puppy. He's three, but he still acts like a puppy. So that's going to be busy. I think him and Brad are going to be best buds because I'm going to be busy, busy and off to work. And, you know, Brad works from home quite a bit. So we'll see. We've had snow again. We've got more coming tomorrow and Tuesday. And my daffodils were up out of the ground and... I'm sure they got a, a shock as they were freezing rain and then snowed on, but next three weeks, work, knitting, sock design, um, knit nights coming up March 19th. If you are in the Moncton Dieppe Riverview area, we are at Cavalcade Brewery on March 19th from six until whenever it's the hours are posted till eight. We're normally there well after nine because the chit chat, um, can't wait for that. And um, yeah, just chugging along, doing regular daily things. So I'm going to wrap it up and say goodbye to you now. And thank you so much for being here um, and being part of my journey and being my knitting friends in my camera. Um, I so appreciate your spending time with me. When there's so many other people out there to choose from, I love watching knitting podcasts. I watch a lot of them and I'm thrilled that a lot of you watch them and then you watch me. Um, it just, joy, 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 you're the winner. <laughs> Happy knitting, my friends. Happy sipping. I will see you in three weeks. Take care. Cheers.